value to the customer. I assume that's what you guys do as well, right? I mean, because the differentiation you make, I mean, you may, for example, I don't know, add value by, I don't know, maybe making the thickness double. You don't necessarily need to look for a search term that says double thickness of the product, right? With a certain right. search term. You just want to make sure the old, the actual sub niche itself, whatever the product is, has got sufficient search volume. The actual differentiation doesn't need to have that, does it? Doesn't need to, but if if, yeah. if the if the keyword has the differentiation in it, then that's like a, a dead giveaway that that's that's a sign that people are looking for that specific differentiated yeah. feature. But, but it's it's hard to find those, isn't it? You really get like stuff where there's five hundred search volume for something and you know, no sellers are providing it. Um, yeah. I've rarely found that on Amazon. Have you? Yeah, that's that's a that's a sign that there are some people looking for this specific feature, even if it's like low search volume or like 100 a month or 500. Yeah. It's a sign that there yeah. are some people looking for this specific thing. And usually, even though maybe it's only 100 or 500 searches. Mm. Usually it means there are more people that are interested in that feature in, in real life, but only 500 actually typed it in. Yeah. 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 No, that makes sense. Yeah. Okay, cool. But, but I mean, yeah. yeah. But um, yeah, you... yeah, with the making the thickness double thing, that's, that's a good example. You know, if, if it, if it, uh, if your product can clearly stand out, like on a page one, like in a main photo and a title that yeah. yours is different and better because it has double the thickness, then that could definitely make sense. If there is a keyword like, you know, fucking laptop stand double thickness, then that would be ideal, but yeah, it's not it required. Doesn't need, it doesn't need to be. If yeah. you can just improve the product uh, and have it double thickness. And if, if that is something that can be made clear, on page one, just get people scrolling on page one, then that's good. Yeah. Um, but ideally, their search volume, of course, because if people typed in uh, laptop stand double thickness, you're going to be right there on page one because yours is. You know, whereas laptop stand in general, there's going to be hundreds of options hard to rank on page one. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, in terms of reviews, because this, this is the thing, because like, I mean, so let's just say we had we had a because I mean you you can always say like some differentiation can always counter counter the the number of reviews right so for example you can even go into niches where everyone has the thousands of reviews but you, if your differentiation is so great you know that you slap on some PPCs and they see it you can still make sales however it's it's somewhat unlikely because to get that level of differentiation you've really got to innovate. Um, to, to a strong degree, but my, Here, my point is that like, let, let's just say you have a niche where say, I don't know, let's say three, four people have under 200 reviews. Everybody else has under say over say 500, 600 reviews. You know, most of them are still only one or two are over a thousand, but most of them have 500, 600 reviews and say two, three listings have under 200 reviews and they all have decent sales. Like, would you say that if you go in with it with the normal differentiation, not like some, you know, a great a crazy innovation, just a decent differentiation, something that adds value that you can still compete in a market where in the top 10, most people have say over four, five hundred, over 500 reviews, a handful have 200. Would you say that's still sufficient to, to compete with those? Yeah, I think so. I think I always think that uh, features and functionality yeah. trump number of reviews always because yeah. it's just common sense like if i'm shopping like i was shopping for a case for my airpods i don't care if there's one that has a thousand reviews mm. uh, it's 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 not as thick and it's plastic as the one that has it's a brand new product only has eight reviews but mm. it's made of silicone and it's a bit thicker mm. and that way it's going to last longer so I don't care if the other ones have a thousand five hundred. I don't give a fuck. I'm looking for what I'm looking for, and I'm gonna get what I want to get. I don't yeah. care how many reviews it has, as long as it doesn't have negative reviews, which means mm. the product doesn't deliver on what it is. Then I'm gonna avoid it. 
but yeah. the, the reviews are good. I don't really care how many it has. As long as it has fucking, you know, around 10 or more, you know, yeah, uh, ideally, yeah. then I'm going to get what suits my needs. Mm, yeah. I mean, the way I've always thought is, is I think it, it depends on, on the variance of the review. So I've always felt that like, if I'm going into a marketplace where everyone's got, say, 200, 500, 600 reviews and I've got 20, I can still compete because as a customer, if you're looking at, you know, one person's product that's got 20 and everyone else has got 300, even though there's a difference there, it doesn't feel like a huge difference. Whereas when you've got everyone in the thousands and you're, you've got 20, I think, I think you can tend to think twice. You can think, well, look, if, if the thousands is the norm and this guy is, you know, if, if, if four figures is the norm, everyone in page one's got four figures, but this guy's only got two. I think that variance tends to stand out a bit more and it can affect you when, when you're going into those niches. But I mean, like you said, you're not, you're not, you're telling us not to go into niches where everyone has a thousand anyway. But I was just saying, I do kind of feel sometimes that, that when everyone's got, you know, thousands and you're coming in 20, I think the variance of, of the four figures and the two figures can sometimes play a role, but you know, I might be wrong. I, I can tell personally, I have till I thought about becoming an Amazon seller, I would only notice the number of stars and not necessarily counts. Like I never used to notice, oh, this person has 10,000 as opposed to this person has five stars. So I would oh. notice the stars. So I think beyond 20, I'm not really even sure if it matters. Like, okay. I don't know if, I, if I'm looking for a product, if I even care. If, if somebody has five stars, five, uh, 25 star reviews, I'd probably buy that over somebody that has 10,000 reviews, I think. It just probably, oh, because yeah. I just noticed the stars. I just like, oh, this looks like a decent pro product. 20 people said it's the best. So I don't know. That's just my opinion. Because I think after a certain number of reviews, I don't think it really matters. matters yeah yeah yep. but that um, goes together with what riley's saying i guess yeah it makes fair enough i agree i agree so does that help through yeah so what, what i'm gonna do then because i mean I'm, I'm still gonna look at these main niches and see if i can if i can scroll down but i did look at a lot of them already and i just feel like it's hard to grill down on those niches so what i'm gonna do is i'm just gonna go on viral launch and specifically look for listings, you know, that have over 5,000 reviews, you know, ideally most of them under 200, sorry, over 5,000 sales, most of them under 200 reviews um, and see what kind of sub niches I come up with. And then I'll look for ways at differentiating those. Well, I'll write a list of, you know, maybe kind of, I don't know, I mean, maybe even 30, 40 of those sub niches that I find that are already, you know, within that, within that, uh, within that range of, you know within that kind of that that specific demographic of of sales and reviews instead of having to niche down from a t from a high one and then when i've got the list of those 20 i'll just go in and see how i can differentiate those one by one yeah um, here a question I'm, for you yeah are you trying to uh look for the uh for random unrelated uh, product that's selling well or are you looking to uh, to find a niche to where you can build an actual brand and yeah, I mean, at the moment, I'm just doing random products. Um, I, I built a, li a little bit of a brand from my first product because it's selling okay. well. Okay. But um, it, it's a small niche, so I can't really branch out of that niche. And I, I obviously, see. like when I when I launched the product, I was thinking about that. But I think what I will probably do is 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 out of the products that that sell well. So you know, I I, I test launch small products, the ones that sell well. I'll then add, you know, like variations to that and different products to that. And you know, one of I'm, the I'm, best ways, one of the best ways to find exactly what kind of customization your, your actual customers want is, for example, if you have a brand, if you build an audience and then you can, I wouldn't even buy, I mean, I wouldn't even be, uh, I would look at the data on Amazon, but I wouldn't be, uh, uh, you know, basing my, my differentiation ideas off of what people are searching. For example, if I'm building a brand and I have a very, loyal fan base that I've built over the month and years, then I can just ask yeah. them, hey guys, what would you like my next product to be? What, how would you like us to, 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 uh, to improve this existing product? That's the best way to get your customer service, customer data, sorry, from actu your yeah. actual buyers. But that's of course the long-term game plan. That's why I'm saying, yeah. Cause I mean, yeah. I was, 
talking to uh, Brandon was talking about it. He was, he was saying that like the audience building thing, it, it, it's it's the the ROI is in the long term. Short term, it, it yeah. doesn't really do much because it takes a long time to get that audience. Now, yeah. anyone can get a audience together. You can just you know do giveaways on Facebook, but those people aren't necessarily like people sure. who are actually interested in your product. So to do that, it takes you know like months years and yeah i mean it's great to do but you shouldn't really expect any short-term results from it um so i mean yeah i mean like it's to answer your question in terms of the brand yeah i mean it would be nice to have a brand but i would say i'm, I'm more interested i mean i enjoy it it's weird because i like you enjoy the aunt. I, I enjoy just finding products mm -hmm. and differentiating them and testing them out mm -hmm. i don't i mean it's nice to have a brand but it just doesn't I don't have as much enjoyment from from building brands. I don't think, but I mean, okay. I mean, it, it was nice when I was building out the, you know, it's different color variations for my first product, and you know, different pack variations, size variations. But mm -hmm. I think for me, it's like looking at a product, you know, finding ones that are these these products with with with, with different small niches, and then trying to differentiate those. I find that I think I find them to be quite interesting, actually. Cool. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, keep, keep hunting, man. I think, uh, yeah. yeah, it's like, I mean, the kind of method that, that I kind of followed, it's always clear in hindsight, but we kind of just tried whatever and then whatever were the most successful products, you build a brand around that. Yeah. And, you know, obviously if there are spin off products that you can launch next, then you can launch, launch those next. But yeah, not everyone does the brand building thing. Um, yeah, uh, you know, a lot of people just do the fucking uh, yeah, whatever sells on Amazon. Let's fucking let's fucking get this money. You know, whatever there's money, let's let's, uh, let's get it however yeah. possible. Yeah, so, absolutely. Uh, yeah. Did, how many how many products did you guys test launch, Riley? Before you found, I mean, how many products have you test launched in in total? Oh, in total, probably like a dozen, and then maybe okay. like five of them have been we've we've kept going. Right, right, okay, cool. And w when you did the orders for them for the first order, like how many units do you generally order for the first one? Uh, it depends if it's a cheap product or expensive, but around like uh, 500. Okay, fair enough. Yeah. 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 I mean, for me, uh, that's yeah. the only Keep us posted in the group. Uh, yeah, I want everyone to, uh, to uh, yeah, get get launching soon so dd you know what you're doing uh is uh is javier he's not on here um oh tino you're on here now what's up tino what up guys <laughs> what yeah, up, not bro? not a lot around me to be honest um <clears throat> just waiting for the holidays in china to be over so i can get my samples uh, ordered um so Vincent found five companies that can make my new product and they said there's some holiday season in China and that should be over tomorrow. So excited for that. And the other thing I wanted to add on, uh, I don't know if you're familiar with the new tool on Jungle Scout. I sent it to um, payment yesterday. It's like uh, review automation. Yeah. Um, yeah, I saw their email. You from a, Looks cool. Yeah, what so does, basically... What does, what does it do? So basically, instead of you going through Seller Central and requesting review, you turn it on um, for each marketplace. You go into your Jungle Scout marketing and it'll be like under the last tab, uh, review automation. And you oh, turn okay. it on for each marketplace and then they they basically send it through the Amazon system. Oh, okay. Cool. Yeah. Basically, you don't have to click the buttons anymore. It just clicks it for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. yeah. Is it true, guys, that if you yeah. use the Amazon automation button, the, the, the review request button, that you can't send emails if you yeah. if you press the button? button. Okay, so it is true. Okay, so I can't send any emails if I use that. But I'm right. Yeah, the emails, the follow-up emails, are those are going away. 
Okay. All right. Yeah. yeah, that's what it sounds like. Um, so, uh, lots of sellers have said their their emails are not going out anymore, and Amazon came out with this request review button. So that's Amazon's new way um, of mm -hmm. sellers to request reviews. And it sounds like Jungle Scout figured out a way to have that be clicked automatically. Yeah, I mean, because I need to send my ebook and stuff, so I hope they don't get rid of it completely. But yeah, let's see. True that, true that, true that. The the digital downloads. Um, yeah, well, for some people that they're still working, but uh, yeah, you should do a uh, an insert card with QR code to deliver. Yeah, it. I was gonna do that because I know how to do. I know how to link ManyChat to the QR code, so I can just do a little very simple flow, and then that yeah. way I can get their email address as well, and then give them the ebook, and then and yeah, I can have cool. them, the subscriber. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yep, yep, yep. Well, uh, cool, guys. All right, keep us posted in the chat. Uh, we've gone about an hour here, but uh, cool. Keep hustling, guys. Didi, all good? Yep. Where are you now, Riley? Are you in Thailand yet? Uh, I'm in Turkey, Istanbul. Right. Oh, okay, okay. And yeah. headed, headed to Thailand? Um, uh, I'm headed to Bali next, probably, oh, okay. uh, probably next month. I'm going to, I'm going to do a, a good month or two here in Istanbul. It's, uh, it's nice. I'm liking it. Cool. Cool. Uh, yeah. No complaints, but, uh, yeah, as always keep us posted in the chat guys. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Keep hustling and, uh, yeah. Have a good uh, weekend and all that. See you guys next week. Cool. Take care. Bye. All right. Thanks, Thanks Riley. Thanks, everyone. Yeah. Take care, Thank guys. You. Speak soon. Take care. Welcome, man. All right. Peace. Thanks for listening to the FBA Lifestyle Podcast. Don't forget to follow on all podcast platforms, YouTube, and Instagram. Ready to fast track your first or next FBA product? Ready to create a real product that leaves the competition in the dust? Then check out the 90-Day FBA Challenge, a 12-week accelerator program with weekly coaching calls where we help you go from zero idea what to sell to a product live on Amazon within 90 days. And download the free Amazon Secrets eBook, FBA Lifestyle, the Amazon Experts. Start your FBA business. Achieve the freedom lifestyle.